So just another quick video about a new fe feature that was added a few builds ago to Virtual GTA 2021, and that is silent queue that I've mapped on this button. So what's that though? Well, it's actually really, really simple. What it does is that it silences the deck like this, it says mute, until you press a hot cue like this one. And it unmutes it instantly. So why is that clever? Well, it's for specific purposes, I'd say is that. So for instance, uh, it's mostly with with turntables and DBS, of course, and uh, maybe controllers with spinning platters. So the thing is that uh, that they have startup time. So if I try to emulate that by going into to options and search for ramp, we have a ramp start time here. I'll just try setting that to one. Like that. And now if I play a track, it starts up slowly. So if I then enable silent, silent cue, I can keep everything open. So the volume is up and the crossfader is turned on, if you will. It's in the center position. So if I play the track now, I don't hear the startup time and I can simply trigger the hot cue here. And it instantly turns off the silent cue and starts playing from where I want. So that's kind of the basic idea. But if I cue this now and just press this, it'll also just work. So is there really any need? No, this was just an, just an emulation using the, the ramp time. So this really only comes into play if you use the turntables or maybe spinning platters, like I said. So let me just turn off the ramp time again. Here. Set that back to zero. Because down here, we actually have a li little tiny DBS setup. So I can actually start playing the track simply by putting this on here. Like that. Now, normally a more expensive turntable would have a start stop button, which is really what is generating the, the ramp up speed. So you can't trigger that, you can't start stop that in time. So uh, that is really what the silent queue is all about. Now, back in the day where we didn't have silent queue, you would do a fake silent queue by simply doing a queue here that goes to into a loop in the part of the track that is already silent. See, the track has ended. So it just does a loop here with nothing on it. And then you would start to put on the turntable again. And then you could start your track without getting a startup time because it's the, it, the, the record or the, the turntable is already spinning. So it's already done its ramp up time. So I can just do this. So that was back in the day. You simply did a, a queue and maybe a loop uh, if you're planning to do it for, for quite a while in a place where the record did not, or the track didn't, uh, has ended its audio. But you don't have to do that anymore. Now I can instead uh, use silent queue. Now if I don't use silent queue, just start it here. If I don't use silent queue and simply drop this on, you can probably hear it's not really precise. It would be better if I had an off button, but it would still have a ramp up time. Or even worse, if you try to hold it, you can certainly hear the ramp up time. So the idea here is simply letting it spin. Click the silent cue. Now it's muted. And then we are when you're ready, probably on a secondary controller or on a, uh, on, a on a pad on your advanced mixer, like an S 
9 or an S11 from, from Pioneer, from Pioneer uh, it'll start instantly because it's already playing in silent mode, like this. So that's really what the silent cue is all about. Uh, it lets you do uh, precise triggering even though uh, you are working with a turntable uh, because the turntable startup time doesn't doesn't need to happen and it doesn't need to happen because you're using silent cue so then you can keep the faders open while the record is, is turning already without getting any audio from it so that's really what the silent cue is all about